Respect the vibe. Welcome to Easy Weekend. It's Easy Weekends. Cats can't see me. Welcome back. It's the sit down. It's your guy, M. Easy. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment, and all that good stuff. Get the algorithms going, people. Run them up. Today, we got Katrina Walker, author of Unbreakable in the Building. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I can't complain. I can't call it. How's everything with you? I, I love the, the aesthetics of your book, by the way. Thank you so much here. I put a lot into it. Truth, honesty, my story, my life. Talk to me about your story. Right out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, uh, I would say a hard life, you know? Uh, growing up in a close-knit black community where it was four or five streets, and we were forbidden to go to that, say, that fifth or sixth street because that's where the white folks were. Mm. So you get beat, you get your butt beat, you go over there, you know? So what? tell me some stories uh, about growing up in that type of uh, environment because, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say racism is gone because I don't believe that, but um, I think in that time frame it was a lot more prevalent and in your face. So talk to me about being raised in those times. What, what, being raised during that time, when I mentioned four or five streets were black people, my mother, Miss D, she kept a whole black community together. Everybody stuck together. Mm -hmm. They were tight. It wasn't no such thing as I had an Easter dress and the other little girl did. Those women were like trailblazers. Everybody, black folks looked out to each other. Mm. You know, but we were forbidden to go to like that fifth or sixth street. It was called Chickasaw Garden, so that's where white people were. Mm. We couldn't go over there. But I would say it, it was a good upbringing growing up, you know, in Memphis during that time, even though people didn't have a lot. We didn't have money, you know, but we, did, we, we would say, Mama would say we were po, P-O, down in the <laughs> South. Not even, she didn't put that O-R on it. Yeah. You know, we were po, but we didn't even know it. You know, it was just so much love. You know? uh, did you have any brothers and sisters in your house? Yeah. I had a brother that got killed at 31, shot and killed, multiple gunshot wounds to the chest. It's all in that book. He was trying to get back to my mama. And that was one of the things that black people, as she would say, things, because we talked <laughs> one of the things that black folks talked to their children about, even then, even then they spoke about, you know, if the police stop you, you know, what to do. This went on way back then. I w I've always wondered about um, white people and the conversations they have with their children and cops. Like, because I remember my mom telling me if the cops ever pull you over, make sure you, you, you look them in the face, you keep your eyes, you, you keep your hands where they can see them because we need you to come home. I'm pretty sure white kids don't have those kind of conversations. Right, because when my brother got shot, you know, his friend was trying to, he said, take me to my mama. You know, and he was 31 years young. The police pulled the car over and started writing up tickets on the car. My brother died like a dog on the back seat of the car because the police wouldn't, they just wouldn't help back then, you know? Mm, and they ain't helping now. <laughs> so that just goes to show how things have not changed. How far have we gotten? That, and I think that's something black people really need to uh, invest some time into figuring out where we go from here because it feels like it, nothing's changing. It's not getting any better. But the thing about then, we had a lot of good music like Marvin Gaye, What's Going On, mm -hmm. you know? We had, you know, all of that, you know, we had James Brown, Black is Beautiful, you know? Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the motivation was there, you know? So, so we had each other. So what? Do, how do you think we could, uh, I don't to say fix it, because I don't think it's to be fixed because the, the system is made to do what it's doing, but how could we change it? Well, right now, you know, I'm a grandmother, okay? And uh, I noticed that my grandkids, it's just things change, life change, nothing stays the same. So those kids, they know a computer, I'm talking about, like they come in the world two years old, I mean, like, hey, Grandma, move out the way, you oh, know? My, I have a three-year-old daughter at home, <laughs> and all she knows is the Prince family on YouTube. So. Yes, so, you know, uh, I just think that we got to go back to the basics, you know? Uh, raising, you know, I could get my butt whooped at home and down the street, but not abuse the kids. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, everybody takes a village, you know, I, to raise the children. That's amen. what I believe. Amen. I agree. It takes Thank a village to, to, to raise a child. <laughs> um, so what are, what are the, um, what are some of the morals of the story of this book? Some of the morals is that I've lived more life lives than a cat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, I went through, as you, the book starts off, it starts off with a home invasion. By the time I started making money, you know, I go through, you have to read the book, Unbreakable. Mm. And then I go through, instead, I was going off to college, came back home, and married this fella. At 19 and 20, what does a woman really know? 
So when he was staying out all night, my mama was saying, when I would call around looking for him, and I would eventually call my mother at 2 o'clock in the morning and say he hadn't made it home, thinking he had a wreck or, or something. <laughs> something. And, she, you know, the advice that women would give you back then, hell, Trina, can you cuss on this show? Yeah, yes, you can. Absolutely. You're good. <laughs> Carry your ass to sleep. That nigga, she used that N-word mm-hmm. back then. They, that nigga be in there with a long-ass lie. So, you know, that's what I was told. But I stayed with him 20 years. 20 years of scuffling trying to figure out how I was going to feed my children, how I was going to. But I got tired. I got tired, and eventually I knew that I had to do something. When I would look at my little children's eyes, Mm -hmm. I had to make a better way for my babies, and I did that. I started my own business. Mm. No, listen, listen, if I, if I keep talking to you, I feel like you're going to give the whole book away. I don't want that. We still want them to go get the book. Make sure, if you're watching, go get her book. It's Unbreakable. It's the story of uh, Katrina Walker. Story of Katrina Walker. Um, let them know how they can get it, how they can follow you, and all that good stuff. They can follow me. They can go on Amazon and get that book. It became a number one bestseller too. Uh, by the congratulations, way, I just want to thank everybody for the love that everybody has given me. You know, I had to start from the bottom, even with what I'm doing now. But I've get, gotten so much love, and especially right here in New York City. Amen. Uh, I've turned that book into a stage play, and it's selling out. Wow! So I'm doing a tour, and it's called Miss D's Kitchen. Miss D on the front porch doing all kinds of stuff, barbecuing. And if your head is busted, you know, <laughs> she going to sew it up too, you know. So all kind of stuff is funny and also drama is in it. It's got a twist of this and that. Everybody's loving the play. So get ready now for y'all for Miss D's Kitchen. It's coming. It's a, it's a play. It's a stage play. Stage play. Wow. Yes. <laughs> How long did it? So so they just took it from this and made it a play? It wasn't like a, a, a recreation or anything like that? It's some of that and some where I created the characters. We got Pretty Tony. He's a pimp on foot. <laughs> I like it. He's a walking pimp. He don't own no Cadillac. You know, but Miss D, she got young friends like Sweet Baby. You know, Sweet Baby, she's ratchet. You know, she's trifling. And then we got this preacher that comes in that's called Reverend Theodore Bucky. <laughs> he comes by. He want a drink, but he don't have a Bible. He's coming in to collect tithes from Miss D. So I'm not going to tell y'all everything. But it's funny as mm. hell. Sounds like it. <laughs> it's time to laugh again. You know, it's been a while since we've been ra- able to sit around as people and just enjoy. You know, you remember when Grandmama had that plastic on her couch? I'm taking <laughs> it on back to those days yes. where you drank Kool-Aid. You know yes, what I'm talking about? Yes. So I'm taking it back to those days. I'm with you. Listen, if you're if you're back in town, you need my support. You got it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you follow, subscribe, and cop the book Unbreakable. Okay. Katrina, thank you for swinging by. I Can appreciate I give you. Can you my social media? Absolutely. Yeah, Let them know how to follow you. Oh, yeah. Follow me on Instagram, and that would be Miss M.S. Katrina, like the mean hurricane, but I'm sweet as hell. <laughs> Miss Katrina Walker, okay? <laughs> Miss Katrina Walker. Thank you again, Katrina, for swinging thank by. You. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, follow and be a part of what she's doing and go cop the book. It's the sit down, and we're out of here. <laughs> Come and catch the vibe. Welcome to Easy Weekend. It's Easy Weekend's. Cats can't see me.